that wore out all my worship of you. And I sing my song of worship.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap those hands and let's love God this morning.
Jesus up in the air. Come on, if you love the Lord, let the peace say glory. Glory, hallelujah. God bless you and you may be seated this morning.
We want to welcome you and thank you for coming to our church. Amen. We're going to give this microphone right in one second. Testing. One, two, amen. What are we going to do? Give me some more. Give me some more. Give me some more. All right, there we go. That's as loud as we're going to get today. Amen. God bless you. We want to thank God for all of our first-time visitors that are here today. We are going to, at this time, excuse all the children for Children's Church. Amen. Uh, we are going to excuse all the children for Children's Church at this time. Amen. Jesus loves the little children, and so don't we. Amen. God bless you. Come on, Sean. Jesus loves the little children. Amen. Sean was all grateful a second. Amen. All the children of the world are red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in the sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children of the world. All the children of the world are red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in the This morning, uh, there's a lot of feedback coming through on the microphone. We're going to get right into the Word of God. Everybody, open up your Bibles very quickly to Luke, the seventh chapter. Luke, the seventh chapter. Amen. Luke, chapter seven. And we're going to look at verse number 44. And we want to welcome you to our church today. And we want to thank you for being a part of this new church here in Norwood, Massachusetts. And we're asking that you would continuously uh, come back. We thank God for you being here today. Amen. You and your beautiful family. Uh, let's go to Luke, the seventh chapter. And I'm, I'm not going to preach before you very long. I'm just going to hit what God had said to me in my prayer and my devotion time. And I'm going to pray that it hits you right where it needs to hit you. Amen. And, and we're believing that the Holy Spirit of God... Uh, will will usher you into a place of better understanding. If you're in need of a Bible, just raise your hand. Amen. And our lovely sister Danny Batista will get one to you. Amen. When you have the Bible in your hand, let's go to Luke chapter number 7 and let's look at verse number 44. Amen. Luke chapter number 7 and we're going to look at verse 44. And I want to uh, thank uh, all of you for uh, giving us the opportunity to minister into your heart and into your mind today. Amen. Actually, we're going to skip verse number 44, and we're going to go to verse number 39. Amen. We're going to look at verse number 39, and in being a part of a growing church, amen, uh, what has to happen is, is uh, we're going to need you to talk back to the preacher because I don't know if I'm going to get a few amens this morning. Amen. Uh, the rain looked like it kept a few people home, but we want to make sure that at least the preacher uh, feels like he's saying something. So every now and again, with this being a non-denominational church, amen, you can you can act Pentecostal and say amen, amen. You can act Baptist and be like, oh, yeah, amen. All right, just give us a little something every now and again to, uh, to, to, to keep the preaching going. Amen. Luke chapter number uh, 7. And, and I want for us to uh, to, to deal with uh, verse number 39. When you have the text in your hand, please say the word is in my hand. Word is in my hand. Oh, come on. Is the word in your hand? Luke chapter 7, verse number 39. When you have to say, I got it. Amen. Verse number 39, it says, Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of person this woman is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. <laughs> yeah. Now let's look at verse number 44. Uh, let's look at verse number 44. And verse number 44 says, Turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. 
She has wet my feet with her tears, and she has wiped them with her hair. Ladies and gentlemen, for the next few moments, I want to talk to you from the topic of the uninvited guest. The uninvited guest. Bow your heads and pray with me, if you will. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you would capture this moment, God, in the heavenlies. Father, that you would begin to feed us and nurture us, O oh God, as we feast upon your word today, that our hearts and our minds would be receptive of the things of God, that the purity of your word, O oh God, would replenish us. God, that we would be fixated on you and you alone. That God, we would know that it's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit alone. That we are able to be motivated for life. God, we pray that the increase of your anointing would happen now. God, that you would begin to usher us into a greater stratosphere than where we are even right now. We ask you to be a blessing unto us. God, that we can be a blessing unto you. In Jesus' name. And everybody, please say amen. 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 Uh, and the usher has not uh, uh, ushered you, but I'm asking for everybody to please come and have a seat uh, in the actual congregation, not in the back. Amen. Everybody, please move forward. God bless you tonight. Uh, let's go very quickly to Luke, the seventh chapter. And when you open up the text, when you open up the script, what you're finding is a story, a very familiar passage of scripture, a uh, passage of scripture that denotes and connotes to us, ladies and gentlemen, that there's a woman who is in a field or in a feeling of desperation. Her desperation has ultimately left her to a place where she now is seeking and searching for something greater than her current position, than her current circumstance. And so what's now happening, just to lay out the manuscript for you as we're looking at the Bible, we understand that though we are a Christocentric church, meaning we are Christ-centered, we also are Bibliocentric, meaning that we are centered on the Bible. When you look at the Bible and you read the Lucian Gospel here, uh, this is one of the Synoptic Gospels in Luke chapter number 7, what you see, ladies and gentlemen, is that Luke is writing to us, letting us know that there's a woman who, who now has entered into Simon's house. Now, upon reading, some of you would think that this is Simon Barjona, who was otherwise transliterated or, or who was transformed into Peter. This is not that Simon. This is not Simon that, were, that, that was healed of leprosy. This was not Simon the leper. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Simon the Pharisee. This is Simon, the one who, who stood upon the Pharisee and, and understood the, the laws of Judaism better than anybody else. This was a religious man. This was a man who had the integrity both in character in his home, supposedly, and or had the integrity in community as well. What you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that when you open up the scripture, what you find is, is that, 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 that now Jesus, Simon, has invited Christ to his house. Jesus now comes, and as he is there, what's supposed to happen, according to tradition, is that when somebody comes into your house, you're supposed to give them, and in those days, you were supposed to give them a flask of water that would wash off the dust and the dirt from their feet, amen, um, from their travel. Uh, I guess some of y'all, amen, you ever been to somebody's house and you got to take your shoes off at the door? Amen. amen. Have you ever been a little embarrassed to take your shoes off at the door? Yeah. Amen. Because you know that your pedicure was not a day schedule until next week. <laughs> amen. Anybody ever had socks, amen, that smelled like the sewer? And they want you to, uh, don't act like the pastor only one of stinky feet, stop it. Good. Amen. Yeah, I know, I saw your toes yesterday, I know it, amen. God bless you. 
<laughs> but anyway, the, but what was supposed to happen, good deacon, he's like, you ain't getting this water now, amen. <laughs> but what is supposed to happen is, is, is when somebody comes into your house, they come into your house, you give them water to drink, and you give them water to wash their feet. Why? Because there is the understanding that, that, that in your house is a clean place. It is supposed to be a holy place. And what you see now is Jesus has entered in. Everybody please come on into the front. What you see now is that Jesus has, Deacon Odom, uh, I want for you to usher people to the front. Amen. That's why I said it the first time. So, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. After the fact. Amen. We're, uh, Nick, we're live. That's why you got you to gotta know where we're at. Amen. God bless you. Yeah. It just gets better at the night church. Amen. We're getting better and better. Everybody say we're getting better and better. Better and better. Say we're getting gooder and gooder. Gooder and gooder. Amen. Gooder is not a word, but that's all right. The word's at our church. So what you see now, ladies and gentlemen, is that we, we, we are coming from, we're coming from the place where uh, Simon understands religion, but he has no hospitality. Oh. He understands religiosity, but his hospitality is missing. One of the worst things for us to do as Christian people is to push our religion onto people or push our faith onto people and not be hospitable to them. Yeah. yeah. It's difficult for me to preach to you about my faith in God, but yet I won't talk to you walking down the street. I, 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 I can't, you can't hear me. You can't hear me. It'd be difficult for me to invite you to my church, but I won't invite you to my house for something to eat. You won't hear me. It's difficult for me to tell you that I would be willing to pray for you, but anytime you call my cell phone, I hit the ignore button. You can't hear me. Am I preaching? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you ain't saying nothing. The harsh reality, ladies and gentlemen, is that many of us, we, we, we want to force our faith on other people, but we have got to learn to be hospitable. You have got to learn to love people enough that you can say, come into my house and everything I have to offer in my house belongs to you. Everything that's attached to me belongs to you. Why? Because I don't own any of it anyway. Everything that God has given you has been lended to you by the hand of God. Because if it weren't lent to you, then you'd be able to take it with you when you go see him after you die. Everything that God has given to you has only been just but for a temporary moment. And the sad part is, is that some of us believe that, that, that who we are is defined by what we have. Well, I don't care if you got a Rolls Royce. That don't mean that you are a nice person. I don't care if you got a lot of money in the bank, so what you drink. It don't mean that you have an understanding on how to be hospitable to people. We have got to get to the point where we are not stuck on religion, but we are stuck on hospitality. I want to ask you how you did today, how you feel today. I want to know what's on your heart. I want to know what's on your mind. That when I say I'm praying for you, I'm not just putting out religious jargon, but I am praying. Praying for what you are going through. Yeah. Come on, come I need on. to understand hospitality Amen. connected to my faith. Yeah. yeah. And so what we see, ladies and gentlemen, is now there's a woman who is who, who, who is thought to be a a a a, a whoremonger. Amen. She's thought to be uh, what we call um how you say thirsty, amen. Um, she, she, she is somebody who, who is, is connected and attached to a past, amen, that, that, that is associated with sleeping with other people's husband and them. Notice the and them part, amen. She is connected with prostitution. But yet, when she hears that Jesus is in Simon the Pharisee's house, what she does is, is she says, I've got to go where Jesus is. She gets to where Jesus is. 
She doesn't go to where religion is. She goes to where Jesus is. That's a preach to you, ladies and gentlemen, because nobody don't care about your religion. We don't care how much you pray. We don't care how much scripture we know. We don't care about how much you preaching that you've done. Only thing I need to know is how much you care. And if you care about me, then you will give me your Jesus and not your religion. Are you hearing me when I'm telling you today? Don't feed me your religion. Feed me your Jesus. Because Jesus is not a religion. He's a relationship. Oh, God, help us all. And so, this woman who is called to be a prostitute decides that Jesus is at Simon's house and I'm going. Yeah. She decides I'm going to get there one way or another. She goes into his house and she don't knock on the door. She just come in and step in like she owned the place. Amen? Amen. Have you ever had somebody come up in your house like they just own the place? Amen? Amen. They don't even ask you, can they go in your refrigerator? They just go in your refrigerator? Yes. Oh, yeah. Don't even wash their hands. Amen? Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. You ever had somebody come and, 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 and they asking you got something to eat and they just digging all in your chips, amen, and ain't no pure or nothing been there yet? Amen. You don't know if you're eating boogies or leftover nastiness from the skin in your nail. What I'm trying to get you to see here is that she steps into the house like, excuse me, excuse me, um, hey, how, how, how you doing, Jesus? It's good to see you. Um, I, 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 I think you go with so as Jesus. Look at the understanding of what's happening here. She steps into Simon's house to see Jesus face to face. When she gets into Simon's house, uh, you have to understand. First of all, nobody rejects her, but she's an uninvited guest. Uh-oh. Nobody rejects her. Nobody stops her. She just walked up in there like she owned the place and nobody stopped her. It's something when Jesus is really in the atmosphere. Rejection does not exist in your life. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, see, see, you have to understand that your rejection is God's protection. But sometimes when Jesus is in your life uh, and you're so focused on Jesus uh, and so focused on what's in front of you, nothing will stop you. You can accomplish whatever goal you want. Uh, you can do whatever thing it is that you want, uh, whatever your aspiration is. Uh, as long as Jesus is in front of you, uh, nobody can reject you uh, from giving what is in front of you if it's connected to your Jesus. Oh, God. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to show you, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes uh, you've got to forget about what is normal. You've got to forget about what is regular. And you've got to press on in uh, and go forward with Jesus uh, and let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing stop you. When Jesus is in front of you, it don't even matter if your spouse supports you. Jesus is in front of you. When Jesus is in front of you, it don't matter if your friends are going to pat you on the back along the way. Uh, Jesus is in front of you. When Jesus is in front of you, it doesn't matter if your family will second the notion. Uh, as long as Jesus uh, is in front of you, uh, everything will be all right. Somebody look down your own and say, it's be all right. Say it again more force. Say it's going to be all right. Yeah, as long as Jesus is in front of you. If you're with me, say, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so, so if Jesus is in front of you, you have to understand that nobody can reject you and stop you from what it is that is in front of you. Here we go. Now, now, now watch this. Mm -hmm. There are two forms of thought that come to me 
Amen. I was vacillating which way I was going to present this thematic thrust, this theological thrust to you today. I was trying to, 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 to decipher, God, what is it that you want me to present to your people? And he told me this right here. He said, present both sides. So I'm just going to do it. So, 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 so she comes into Simon the Pharisee's house and, and, and she, she steps over everybody and moves to Jesus. What would give her that comfortability? Because it ain't just Jesus. What would give her that comfortability? Unless she's been there before. Uh-oh. Wait a minute, but she's, she, she's the prostitute. She's the whore. She, she, she's the booty giver. She ain't supposed to be in the religious man's house. What? And nobody stops her? Let me present this to you. Sometimes you have to know that you can, there are some people that are religious in public, but they are struggling in private. Yeah. Oh, did you hear me? Yeah. The, they, they are religious in public and struggling in private. One thing you have to know about your salvation is that salvation is personal, but it ain't private. Yeah. That's salvation. Struggle is personal, and you try to keep it private. The difference between struggle and salvation, ladies and gentlemen, is that salvation is yours granted to you by grace. Struggle is yours granted to you by the faults of your flesh. And Simon the Pharisee, he don't stop her. He's like, oh, yeah, it's you. Hey, how you doing? See, some of us have got to stop with this stuff of what goes on in my house stays in my house. Because it don't really mean that you're, that, that you're keeping stuff private. Whatever's going on in your house and you keeping it in your house, it's really causing for at some point Jesus is going to know what's going on in your house. Somebody say, what's done in darkness is brought to the light. Anybody know that scripture? Yeah. Amen. Watch this. She's an uninvited guest who does not get rejected, who just presses in like she's been there before. Here's something, uh-oh, everybody say, uh-oh. Uh -oh. She sees Jesus, and the Bible says that immediately she had begun to go down to his feet. The first thing that she saw was the back of Jesus. So she didn't even see the front of Jesus because when she came through the door, the scripture, read it, the scripture says that she saw the back of Jesus. See, can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that some of us have got to be mindful of this one thing. That, see, you don't even have to see God face to face uh, in order for you to get the blessing that it is that you want to have. Uh, Sometimes all you have to do is just see the very back of who he is uh, and then you seeing his back. Back, you realize that he never turned his back on her. Uh oh. She sees the back of Jesus and immediately she positions herself to be in front of him. Uh oh. She sees his back and she positions herself to the front. You have to always be mindful that Jesus will never ever turn his back on you. But when you see his back, he wants you to move to the front. He wants you to move to the posture where you are no longer chasing him, but you're now in front of him. I don't know who this is for, but you got to stop chasing God and find how to get in front of God. It's a terrible thing to be where God used to be. You should always want to be where he's going. God, whatever you do, do not leave me out. She's an uninvited guest. But then she has an unusual situation. Watch this. The unusual situation is this, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says that she had begun to wash his feet with what? Her tears. And then she did what? She dried them what? With her hair. Amen. But watch this. Watch this. Because we're going to have Baptist church in a minute. Watch this. She decides that in her seeing Jesus, he's worth her tears. Uh, 
upon parenthetical study and reading the text, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is, is that uh, she comes with a alabaster box. And a alabaster box was recognized as what we know to be a flask and or a veil that carried ointment and oils in it. Now, when I studied this text, I could not see that the girl was crying. The Bible never says that the, that the girl was crying. All it said was that she washed his feet with what? Her tears. But it never said that she was crying. You have to, in order to have tears, you have to what? Cry. Right? Come on, talk back to the preacher. In order to have tears, you have to what? Cry. Cry. In order for you to have tears in your eyes, you have to be crying. She does not cry when she sees Jesus. She did not cry. Read the text. Instead, what we find, ladies and gentlemen, is that upon the study of this woman, some believe her to be Mary or Anne or Martha. When, when we read the study of the text, the first thing is, is that she is known to be a single woman who is a whoremonger, who is a prostitute, who is a backer-upper of the backer-upper thing. Amen. She, she is known to be somebody who drops it like it's hot and don't mind picking it up when it's cold. Amen. Y'all got me? Amen. All right. I'm just trying to paint it. I'm giving you what the Bible says. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, it don't say drop it like it's hot. <laughs> oh, come on. Laugh at church, man. It's all right. Show you 32 teeth where you wish they were. Amen. <laughs> Some folk be at church like, pray the Lord back. <laughs> God bless you. Come on, smile. It's okay. Church ain't that serious all the time. What she does is she comes and the Bible says she had an alabaster box. The alabaster box is another word for a flask. And in the flask there were there was oils, and in the oils, what happened was because she was a single woman, what we find upon research is that every time she slept with a man that was not her husband, she would cry. And every time she would cry, she and in those days, single women, what they did was when they were single and feeling lonely and lamenting, they would cry, and the tears from their eyes would flow into the alabaster or fall into the veil. So every time that she would cry because of either her sin or her loneliness, it would go into the eye. It would come from her eye and into the flask. And so being mixed with oil, being mixed with the fragrance, you have to understand that, that, that they, they would use the oil to, to keep the tear, amen, to keep the cries, to keep the tears, alive because the tear is really salt and you amen you ever seen that that the, 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 the tears would dry up on your face amen you ever cry and then you got dry boogie and dry tear all at the same time amen i'm painting every kind of negative picture today right now. Amen. yeah and so 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 what's happening is is she's crying and 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 in those days when you wanted to marry somebody what you would do is is you would present the box of alabaster to who was supposed to be your husband to be what she did was she saw jesus and she decided i'd rather present my tears to somebody who values me than to present my tears to somebody that does not understand me. Oh God. See, I gotta tell you ladies and gentlemen that she's an uninvited guest but she takes an unusual method. She busts in the door, she kicks down the door, she steps into the house, she presents her tears and she's not crying but she pours the tears and the oil on the feet of Jesus because she saw that his feet were dirty and that there was no hospitality in Simon's house. So what does she do? She decides I love him not because of what he has did for me or done for me or did to me but I love him because they don't recognize him 
Something you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, about Jesus. You can know who he is and still not know who he is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. You can know who he is and still not know who he is. You can know him to be a healer, but unless he's healed you, you don't know who he is. You can know him to be a comforter, but unless he's comforted you, you don't know him to be a comforter. What am I trying to tell y'all today? There are so many people who are stuck upon religion that they are missing the idea and missing the notion that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is everything that he is cracked up to be. It's a shame that uninvited guests, the uninvited guest is the only person who recognized who he was in that moment. What am I trying to get you to see this morning? Some of you have got to stop being like Simon the Pharisee and start being like the uninvited guest. Mind you, watch this. It is the church people, Simon, who says, oh, if he knew who she was and what she did, please, he wouldn't let her touch him. Talk about it. Ain't that something? It ain't the people in the world that say this about her. It's the people in the church that think they know who God is that are automatically judging her based off of where she is or what they think they've heard about her in life. One of the most dangerous things for you to do is to talk about what somebody used to be when God created them to be something else. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's possible that you can come in church with your skirt about yay high and only the nasty folk is going to be the one that got something to say about it. Uh, the real that the real the reality is I'm just glad you made it to church. I don't care how short your skirt is. I'm just glad you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 there's gonna be some people that talk about oh well, his shirt was too tight and his muscles all ripped up and everything. Well you the nasty one that's looking up uh, he's just trying to lift his hands up uh, and give God a loud shout of praise. Uh, I don't know who this is for up in here but you gotta realize uh, that God interested in the religious people. He's interested in the uninvited guests. He likes the messed up people. He likes the jacked up people. Oh yeah, yeah, I used to be a prostitute, but now I'm somebody's wife. Oh yeah, I used to be a gangster, but now I ain't holding up banks, I'm holding up my hands. But give God a good praise. I wish I had somebody in here. Somebody give me a microphone. All she's trying to do is give God what belongs to him. And then somebody got something to say about where she is. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is that there's always going to be somebody that got something to say that don't understand what you're doing. Yeah, see, when you come to church, you ain't got to worry about who's looking at you. When you come to church, you ain't got to worry about who's judging you. Because they don't understand you and your relationship with Jesus. Yeah, so if the worship is going on and you're just sitting in your seat and everybody think you ain't deep, maybe you're praying because the girl was singing off key and you're the one that brought her back on key. No, oh, you ain't the one up dancing and shouting. Maybe you ain't dancing and shouting because you don't feel confident with what you wore that day. And you're just trying to get right with you. I don't have nobody in here. Can you let me see ya? into the understanding that nobody else matters other than her and Jesus. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes you have to be okay with the fact of nobody else mattering. Uh-oh. You are a people pleaser every day of your life. If you think about it, you have to please your children. Amen. 
If you think about it, you have to please your spouse. Yeah. Amen. If you think about it, you have to please your booski and them. Amen. If you think about it, you have to please everybody. See, one thing you have to understand about God is that you don't have to do anything to please him. He just looks at you and says, oh, please. Oh, you ain't hear me what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So, 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 so even though you were a sinner and you made a mistake, all he does is say, Oh, please. Yo, wait a minute, Jesus. I'm a fornicator. Oh, please. Wait a minute, Jesus. I'm a adulterer. Oh, please. Wait a minute, Jesus. I'm somebody that smoke weed every now and again. Oh, please. Wait a minute, Jesus. I'm shooting up some stuff. Oh, please. Why? Because he's able to forgive you of every one of your sins when he died on the cross. It don't mean a thing. All he wants you to do is say, oh, please. I've been there before, but I ain't going back. I used to sin that way. Here's what's happening. She takes the flask from her tears. She pours them on her feet. After pouring them on his feet, rather, what she does is she takes her hair. Some believe that she took her hair and turned her head to his feet. But if you look at it, the Bible says that when she came into the house, she poured her oil in the front. Then she positioned herself behind him. Then her hair had reached all the way to the front of where he was just to wash his feet. Now, it was customary to wash the feet. It was uncustomary to use your hair. Sometimes, because of the un invited guest. God will allow for unusual situations that undetermined measures would happen. She uses her hair because it's all she has. She couldn't use her clothes because if she used her clothes, Simon and the religious people who had something to say anyway would have started to chastise her all the more. She didn't use her clothes. She used something that was connected to her. I don't know who this is for in here, but you've got to get to the place where you are so willing to serve Jesus that everything connected to you, you are willing to give back to him. She stands in the back of him. She takes her hand, throws it to the front of him, and she dries his feet. Every black woman would be heated. Out <laughs> my head. Unless you natural, amen. Not even then, amen. <laughs> my head? Every sister would be like, oh, Jesus, no, no, Jesus. You don't know how much I paid for this weed, Jesus. Oh, Lord, Jesus. <laughs> Some of y'all are going to miss heaven because of all that weed, amen. <laughs> Jesus going to come back, amen. Jesus come back, and, and y'all like, what's going on? <laughs> and everybody been doing this, and Jesus that came and took you all up into heaven, amen. Weed is not going to be in heaven. Let me just put that out there. Amen. Weed is not going to be in heaven. Matter of fact, you may have to answer for all them animals that have been dead up in your head. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> but pay attention. Let me show you what happens. She washes his feet with her hair and her tears. And immediately, everybody, they went from talking about what she used to be to now talking about what she's doing. Can I tell you that some of you don't be upset with yourself. No matter if you're doing good or doing bad, there's always going to be somebody that got something to say. 
whether you're doing all the right things or you're doing all the wrong things, there's always going to be somebody who got something to say. See, I need for you to get this today. Are you Simon the Pharisee? Or are you the uninvited guest? The sinner who can admit to the sin, yet be submissive to the grace that God wants to disperse upon you. I believe full throttle that there are some people in here that are vacillating right now. Am I Simon the Pharisee? Do I know all about God or do I think I know all about God? Or am I this uninvited guest who don't care nothing about no church? I don't care nothing about no choir. I don't care nothing about being the best tither. Only thing I want to do is be where Jesus is. That's where you got to be. Everybody in here has a story. And the sad part is that nobody knows the story better than you. And when people think they know your story, they create bullet points to what it is that they think they see. So for example, you can be a woman that is sitting in a church service with your legs crossed and your arms folded. And when you see her, you think to yourself, man, she is so classy. Man, that's awesome to God be the glory. Then you check her Facebook and you see that she got more pictures of herself. Uh, amen? amen? And I'm not talking about nobody in the church. I'm just using it as an example. I'll use a brother now. Amen? Because they're going to like, Pastor, I ain't coming to your church no more, Pastor, because you like to talk on the people, Pastor. No, let me use a brother now. You can see a brother come into church, look like the most humble dude. He can look like San Juan Santo Domingo, what up, though? Amen? And he can, he can be fly, hair on flick, amen, eyebrows just amen. done, amen. He can smell like a, a, a thing full of isamiyaki, amen. <laughs> Mixed with golden sand. Amen. <laughs> and, 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 and he can be an abuser. Yeah. Sure. He can, he can kick you right down the stairs, amen, then pick you up and rape you after. What am I trying to tell you? There's always a story to the looking. There's always a story to the seeing. But you cannot be the author of your story. If God is the author and the finisher of your faith, you have to allow God to be the one that writes the story for you. You have to be the one that says, God, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah, you may be the person that used to do all of what she was doing. You may be the person that, 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 that looks at your life and says, I'm in too deep now. I got to stay on this course. I'll never be anything other than this. The devil is a liar. You can make a decision right now and make a decision today that says, I will no longer be in a place of used to be. I'm going to press forward. I'm going to give God my best. I'm not going to do the same stuff tomorrow. This is my change. This is my period of hope. I'm just go where Jesus is. I'm not worried about who's going to talk about me. I'm not worried about who don't like me. I'm not worried about who don't like what I got on. I'm not worried about on who knows my struggle. I'm not worried about where I struggle. Okay. Only thing I'm worried about where Jesus is. Don't give me religion. Please give me Jesus. Is there anybody in here that can understand where I'm coming from today? If you don't understand where I'm coming from, I pray for you. I'm the pastor of this church, and I'm telling you that I have got to press where Jesus is as well. Don't think because you got a title means that you don't struggle. Amen. Are you hearing me what I'm trying to tell you? I'm always constantly trying to get to where Jesus is because I don't trust me. Amen. 
I don't trust me. Amen. Certain times, I don't talk to people call me on the phone. I can't take that phone call. Why? Why? It ain't that I don't want to talk to them. Amen. It's just that I'm mad about this over there right now. And I don't want them to be the one to get what I'm mad about over there. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? I struggle just like you. Amen. You don't believe me? Drive next to me in traffic. Amen. You will see a different pastor real quick. I'm like, come on, man. That's always my that's my go-to statement when I'm in traffic. I'm like, come on. Oh, my God, go. Sometimes God be like, you really want me to go? I ain't talking to you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sad part is I ain't playing. <laughs> but I need you to understand that there's always that religious spirit that will try to keep people from church. Try to keep people from God. Forget religion, man. Forget religion. I know I'm, I didn't preach much today. I did more teaching and talking and cracking jokes. But, but forget religion. Perchance you really search the pages of your life. Some of you don't like where you've been. Amen. And we all got secrets that we hope we that nobody don't ever find out about. Amen. 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 Let me turn around this way. Amen. <laughs> look, look at Dave. <laughs> Dave's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> See, you have to understand, man, that we all have been somewhere. We all have done something. But it doesn't give church people the right to reject you or talk about you because of what they think they know about you. And the truth is, is that they were there before. Yes. Hello. I'm so tired of people talking about young ladies that have babies out of wedlock when all they did was have the abortion. I'm tired of it. I'm telling the truth in church, amen? I'm just telling the truth. I, I, I believe full throttle that, that we need to make a decision to not be judgmental, but we need to make a decision to be inviting. It's a shame that this lady, she decides that hey, ain't nobody going to invite me in the house, so I just got to make my way into the house anyhow. You have to be inviting. Amen. This is not, I, I'm not a conforming pastor. Amen. I don't conform. I don't confirm. But I'm not going to turn somebody who is, I, I, I'm not going to look at somebody in their face and tell them, I will never do a gay marriage. Let me say that. Amen. Forget it. Then don't ever ask me. Amen. I will go to jail. I'm not doing it. Amen. Whatever. Lock me up. Throw away the key. I ain't doing it. But I will never ever reject anybody that wants to come here. Amen. And they want to sit and hear the word of God. They want to. Amen. I've got gay friends all day. Some of my neighbors, they just all kind of gay. Amen. I, when I say all kind of gay, I mean like one minute they're just, hey, what's up, Dave? Next minute, hey, Dave. It's like, it's like, which one are you? What up, dog? Hey, how are you? Good to see you. You coming to Liberty Life next week? Whatever. Amen. I don't care. I don't care because the Bible says hate the sin and not the man. I will invite you all day. I ain't afraid of no pimp. Amen. Come on, dude. Come on. Come to church. You got a lot of money. Come to church. Come to church. I ain't afraid of nothing. I'm not afraid of what you used to be because when you get here, Whoever you are is not going to be able to stay and or remain. Okay. If you keep coming to church the way you're supposed to, you keep wanting this thing that God has for you the way that you're supposed to, I guarantee you your life will change. Yeah. And I guarantee you that you will like you in the mirror much more when Jesus is in you than with Jesus without you. Oh, I'm preaching up here today, man. I ain't got a whole lot of who not is. I ain't got, but I'm saying some stuff, man. You got to get this today. You don't be afraid to invite people to this church who are a hot mess. 
The church is not a place for them that are perfect. The church is a place for the messed up, jacked up, crazy people. This is a crazy house full of crazy people. And it takes a crazy people to believe in a God that they've never seen before anyway. So you should allow everybody to come to church with you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a drug dealer. Oh, please. Uh, did you hear me what I said today? Yes. I'm a womanizer. Oh, please. You got to get that Jesus in you, man. You got to get to that point where you can say, I've been there. I've done that. I'm not ashamed, but I ain't never going back. I ain't never going back. I know I got to wrap this thing up, but I just see that I'm connecting with some of y'all. That's why I keep talking, amen? amen? You don't want me to keep talking, then just stop paying attention, amen? amen. <laughs> Start thinking about football at 2 o'clock or something. I, don't I, I, I need you to hear this. It's the uninvited guest that was attracted to Jesus. Not the religious. I need uninvited guests here, man. I want us to win Norwood for Jesus Christ. I want us to win the South Shore for Jesus Christ. We're a small church right now, and I'm cool with it. But I'm going to tell you, we're only a small church because there's a whole lot of messed up people that don't realize that we don't care about them being messed up. We want to build them up. We want to love them up. We want to take them up. If you're with me, say, I got you, I got you. Come on, stand to your feet in this place today. Thank you, Jesus. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. 